Conservative and Tall, Selma, Alabama. Built in 1856 in the Greek Revival style, this beautiful antebellum mansion was bought in 1864 by John McGee Parkman. In the years after the Civil War, Parkman was arrested and imprisoned for cotton speculation. While in prison, Parkman attempted to escape, but was shot and killed in the process. When his wife was forced to sell their house a few years after his death, his ghost began to appear regularly throughout the house and grounds, where it is still seen to this day. People often report hearing windows and doors being opened and shut, when no one else is in the house, as well as doors that close behind people and lock on their own. The apparitions of two little girls are also frequently seen, though their identities remain unknown. The Whaley House, San Diego, California Once a private residence, this mid-19th century house is now a museum dedicated to its former owners and the history they created here. Part of the house was once rented out to the county of San Diego, for use as a courtroom, which may explain the appearance of several unidentified ghosts within the house. Apart from these unnamed apparitions, the original owner, Thomas Whaley, his wife, one of their children, a little girl, and a convict are repeatedly seen within the house. The house was apparently haunted as soon as it was built, as the spirit of a man who had been convicted and hanged on the site took up residence in the house upon its completion. The Whaley apparitions are often seen engaged in the normal activities of their former day-to-day -day lives. Doors have been known to close and lock on their own, and footsteps are often heard throughout the house along with music and the crying of a baby. The Octagon House, Washington, D.C. Completed in 1801, this former mansion is one of the most historic in the nation. Built for Colonel John Taylor III, it was briefly the site of the French Embassy during the War of 1812, as well as the temporary residence of President Madison who signed the Treaty of Ghent in its central parlor. Today, the building is used by the American Institute of Architects as a museum but it has also made quite a name for itself as a center for paranormal activity. As far back as the mid-19th century, the central staircase is a major hotspot for the supernatural, as footsteps are often heard, along with the saddened voice of a woman. Doors have been locked only to suddenly be found standing wide open. Lights turn on and off on their own, and footsteps and even faint footprints have been reported throughout the building, and objects often move without human interference. Robinson Rose House, San Diego, California Reconstructed in the late 20th century according to the specifications of the original mid-19th century structure, this building seems to have brought back some spirits along with it. Built by Judge James W. Robinson, this house was also used for private and community business purposes, making it a very active locale in its day. Today, this activity has continued in the form of various paranormal occurrences. Various apparitions, in period attire have been seen, as well as strange human-shaped mists. Footsteps are often heard and, Women often feel their hair tugged or toyed with. 5. The ghosts seem fascinated by anything electrical, as lights often go on and off, on their own and the elevator has a tendency to move from one floor to the other unmanned. Villisca, Axe Murder House, Villisca, Iowa. On the night of June 9, 1912, eight people, including six children, were murdered in this house by an unknown assailant wielding an axe. The murders, not surprisingly, caused a national sensation, and while many suspects were questioned and even tried, later acquitted, this mass murder remains unsolved to this day. Either from the violence of their deaths, or their unresolved nature, this house has subsequently become a very active site for the supernatural. Apparitions have often been seen, and disembodied footsteps and voices are common occurrences. The sight and sounds of the children are the most widely reported, with EVPs and personal accounts indicating laughing and then crying, as well as some children telling others to hide. 
Lizzie Borden House, Fall River, Massachusetts. Undoubtedly Massachusetts' most infamous residence, this house was the site of the notorious axe murders of the parents of Lizzie Borden, who herself was the main suspect in the murders. There was so much evidence against her that, she was quickly charged with the crime and sent to court, only to be acquitted. No other person was charged with the murders, making this one of the nation's most well-known unresolved murder cases, oddly enough. Borden remained in Fall River for the rest of her life, residing in a neighborhood not far from where the murders took place. It is believed that her desire to remain here has held true even in death. Her ghost has often been seen throughout the house and has been heard laughing on the second floor near the stairs. Her father and stepmother have also been seen and heard, along with their former maid who has been heard calling for help. Nrasa Castle, Port Townsend, Washington State. Inspired by Chateau in the French Renaissance style, this beautiful former mansion, now a hotel, was completed in 1892 at the behest of Prussian Baron Charles Eisenbeiss. It was originally supposed to be a hotel, but this business venture fell through so Eisenbeiss turned it into his family's home. It remained empty for a couple of decades after his death and eventually became a Jesuit school before finally achieving its original purpose as a hotel. While throughout the building there are instances of electrical devices switching on and off, and doors opening and closing on their own, it seems to be the third floor that's the most haunted. Footsteps and voices are often heard on this floor, but room 306 is the most active. A female apparition has been seen and felt quite often here. She especially likes to go through guests' belongings and usually moves things around and often heard singing in the bathroom as well. The dining room and former chapel, also a dining area now, are also active, with apparitions of Eisenbeiss' wife Kate often seen, and reports of glasses being knocked over or shattering much talked about. Sour Castle Kansas City, Kansas. Built in 1871 by Anton Sauer, originally from Austria, this beautiful but now derelict Italianate home was a Sauer residence, for several generations, during which time it was the site of many of the family's traumatic tragedies. Two people have committed suicide in this house, while a third, a little girl, drowned in the pool on the property. The original owner, Anton, also passed away in this house. With so many deaths, most of which were not peaceful, the house has become a hotbed for the supernatural. Various disembodied voices have been heard, either laughing, shouting, or crying. While doors often open and slam on their own, people have reported feeling watched, and that objects have had a tendency to shake or rattle violently on their own. The Sally House, Atchison, Kansas. Few haunted houses in America have had the level of malevolency that has been reported in this particular house. Once a doctor's house, a little girl named Sally died here during a botched appendectomy, and her spirit has been here ever since. When a family moved in during the 90s, this little girl began to create mischief, knocking pictures down, toying with electrical appliances and leaving a trail of their child's toys throughout the house. This activity eventually escalated to a violent level, but while they originally thought it was the little girl that their child had seen, they inevitably learned through a medium, that it was actually a middle-aged woman responsible for the violence. All of her malevolence was directed towards the male owner of the house, repeatedly scratching and gouging him leaving deep red welts and scratching deep enough to cause bleeding and bruising. After this entity shoved him and almost sent him careening over the railing of the stairs on the second floor, the family finally moved out of fear for his life. These activities have been documented by several paranormal groups. Woodruff Fontaine House, Memphis, Tennessee Completed in 1871, this house was built for Amos Woodruff, a local businessman. His daughter Molly was married in the house and lived here her whole life and beyond. 
Molly's spirit has been seen repeatedly throughout the house, now a museum, and has even interacted with employees. On one occasion, Molly appeared to a couple of employees in order to explain that she would like the furniture rearranged according to how she'd always placed it in the house. Impressions are often left on her bed as if someone were sitting there. While Molly's spirit is certainly kindly, there is a more hostile male entity who frequents the first and third floor leaving the second to Molly. This particular entity greets many people with an overwhelming sense of hostility, and one woman even had her necklace ripped off of her. The Pink Palace, Louisville, Kentucky The hauntings that occur in this house act as a testament to the fact that not all spirits are negative entities and that some of them are actually rather devoted to the living. The Victorian mansion was completed shortly before the dawn of the 20th century to be used as a gentleman's club. It later became a private residence. Over the course of its history, one special spirit, dubbed as Avery, has consistently appeared to homeowners and tenants. He is described as a well-dressed gentleman from either the late 19th or early 20th century and is considered a friendly spirit. His appearance is often heralded as a warning for some sort of calamity. He appeared to one female tenant while she was taking a bath, causing her to hurriedly get up, just before two intruders threw a concrete block through her bathroom window. He has also appeared in the kitchen to warn of impending fires. Chateau La Roche, Loveland, Ohio Considering the slightly eccentric nature of this amazing home's construction, it seems almost fitting that it should also serve as a site for various hauntings. This medieval castle replica was constructed by Harry Andrews, over the course of 50 years has a hobby house, which he eventually willed to the local Boy Scouts troop. A couple lived near the castle for some time until their moonshine operation caused an explosion and killed the wife. Today, an entity that is thought to be this woman has been seen walking the grounds. It is believed that Andrews also haunts the castle, as an apparition has been seen going towards his old bedroom. Another entity dubbed the Viking, has also been seen, wearing a cloak and helmet. It is thought that this spirit is somehow attached to one of the artifacts Andrews brought back from Europe during his travels. Grant Humphrey's Mansion, Denver, Colorado An amazing tour de force of the Beaux-Arts style, this 1902 mansion was erected for businessman and former Governor James Benton Grant. After 1911, the home belonged to Albert E. Humphreys who would later die in the home, as a result of a suspicious gun accident. A nearby graveyard incurred controversy in the years just before the house was built when its site was slated to be used for other purposes. And many of the remains in the cemetery were left available for grave robbers, until the city had enough of the fiasco, and filled in the area to create a park. It is believed that many of these disturbed spirits have come to haunt this neighboring mansion, as several different apparitions have been viewed here, although one of them has been identified as Humphreys, 